All right, T Radio V Inside Metal Show. Little Van Halen to start off on fire because this man is definitely on fire. We got the mayor, not just the mayor, the metal mayor of Montebello, Mr. Jack Hedginian. How are you, Jack? I'm friend? good. How are you, Bob? I am doing great, man. It is such a pleasure to have you on this show. Inside Metal goes political on this show here. We got the, the, the main man. This, this guy is a true metalhead and a one hell of a great guy man we've we've known each other for for quite some time you were actually a, a, a fan of the podcast and you would send me emails here and there and i used to like check out your page i go who is this he must be some important guy i would see all this <laughs> stuff and you were a councilman then yeah i was and i time. reached out to you uh, about your show i had interest obviously i'm a metalhead by heart absolutely in my heart yes i call myself the the uh, daytime politician and the nighttime metalhead right on yeah. right on very cool. And then we met at the NAMM show not too long afterwards. And then I, I've seen this guy. He is a true metal hat of several metal shows. We hung out at the in Vegas. Remember the Iron Maiden Megadeth show out in we Vegas? Did. And, of course, Judas Priest uh, here in L.A. And uh, uh, the guys, the guys everywhere. We're going to we're going to show some some pictures uh, in, in a bit and show the uh, true metal mayor in action with a lot of the uh, the great metal heads. But uh, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. You had a big event uh, yesterday. Uh, talk a little bit about, I mean, you've just become mayor. I was at your inauguration about... Uh, November. That was back in November. Yeah. Wow. Already. Yeah. And so, uh, and, um, you know, and I got to say, I've, I've been following you and, and what you do on, on, on your uh, Facebook page and, and this and that. And uh, the stuff you've done for the community of uh, Montebello is just tremendous. I know... Um, you know, so many charity events you're you're always involved with, and raising money to help uh, others, and to to raise capital for the city, to raise uh, funds and stuff for the city, and and always involved in uh, uh, tons of like I said, charity events and stuff. Uh, talk a little bit about what you're doing now. Well, I'm mayor as of last November. I uh, was elected to the city council in 2011, um, and I got became the mayor in November of uh, 2014. And yes, you were at my inauguration and. It was awesome to see a fellow metalhead there. Uh, I had like over 800 of my closest friends. It was huge. Um, yeah. But to see some of my metalhead friends there was a real, uh, real honor, and I was touched by that. I, uh, you know, as mayor, it was my job to uh, put the city uh, back on the map mm -hmm. in a positive light, uh, fix a lot of the problems there. Obviously, I had a lot of good help with people that worked uh, that work at the city, some of my colleagues on the city council as well. Um, but I uh, definitely. Um, want to be an active mayor and I've been an active mayor and I hope to do that till the end of my term is to help all those out. Um, as the mayor, people have a lot of expectations out of you and uh, they want you to help. And I do my do as much as I can. Mm. Uh, however, being the mayor, it's really taken a lot of my time and haven't done many uh, metal shows lately. Uh, but I did purchase tickets for Van Halen on July 14th on Friday, so well, we're looking forward to that. And I know Van Halen, of course, one of your favorite bands, a band that you grew up on. Yeah. And you were uh, actually playing in uh, uh, Van Halen tribute bands, or you did a lot of cover Van Halen covers uh, younger yeah. as a kid? Yeah, I did a little of that. I uh, tried, made my attempt on the guitar, and uh, my cousin Greg Miller got really good at it, so mm -hmm. I shifted over to the bass, right. and we had a band for a little while. Um, and uh, I would say that, yeah, my dream was to be a rock star, uh, but I'll settle for being the mayor. All right. You were singing for a while, too, right? I, yeah, a little bit of that. I, I think Jake might have some video of uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, give him a second. Oh, I see a, I see a brick wall. There we go. <laughs> While Jake pulls up the video here, I got to say one thing about that, that uh, uh, the, uh, inaugura uh, the inauguration. Uh, a fantastic Armenian dinner. A fellow Armenian right here. That was <laughs> delicious, man. I want to thank you for that as well. We know how to eat. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. You got to pull up there, Jake. I'll, I'll give him a minute or two. So um, uh, talk about some of the stuff growing up. I know you were huge, like, you know, bringing up Van Halen. Uh, and you had seen the band, uh, I'm sure, several times uh, back yeah. in the day. And, uh, oh, you're about to pull up. Um you know, of course, that that whole area, you know, the East L.A., Pasadena, uh, you know, uh, all that that Montebello uh, was huge, huge metal uh, town. And, you know, because you, you've got to be at least uh, I, I figure, you know, uh, 10 to 12 years younger than me. But you're been grew, grow, you grow up into all the classic metal, you know, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest and, uh, you know, New Wave of British Heavy Metal, which Big was time, um, you know, because when you were a teenager, that was like in the 90s when, you know, alternative and grunge and 
you know, the Lilith Bear and all that was going on. And, and I get? fought that. I Good fought that. You, yeah, I was, yeah very anti, right I was very anti-Nirvana. I was very anti I fought it real hard because <laughs> I want to stay true to my metal roots. Right. Um, but it took over. And um, it's just interesting how, how that just broke out so strong mm. around 92, 93, 94. Did you have older siblings or something? I have an older young? sister. I have mm. to say that my sister did have an influence because she was a big David Lee Roth fan. Right. Um, and she pretty much did turn me on to Van Halen. Uh, my passion for Van Halen, I would say, started around 83, 84 with the uh, release of the 1984 album. So when Jump came on the radio, I made my parents turn up the radio and we all sang along. And my dad was a musician, too, so all he right. appreciated good music. And uh, yeah, so my parents and I, we'd go out on Sunday nights to eat. And we usually drove somewhere quite far from home to right. get out. And it, it was a lot of music in the car. And it started there. And I had some older cousins. Who are really into music uh, uh my cousin uh armin hovenes and he passed away last summer mm, uh, a big metal head we saw sabbath together all right uh, summer of 2013 in irvine mm. and then just before that i saw them in japan wow yeah. wow and you were at the Ozfest, right was that for the Ozfest? that was Ozfest in japan in may of 2013. Wow. uh that was with tool yeah and uh slipknot i'm a big slipknot fan all right yeah very cool i remember that i remember yeah. that that was uh uh, I, I don't know if Sabbath are going to get back together now. There's all this controversy if they're going to do any more shows together or not. So that could have been one of the last Sabbath shows right there. It it possibly was the last tour. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. You you don't know what to expect with um, with Ozzy because he's just such a he's such an icon in in, in, in the whole rock metal scene. But um, Sharon Osbourne, she calls all the shots. Absolutely. Unfortunately, sometimes, but what are you going to do? You got that set up there, Jake? All right, let's play some uh, vintage Jack Hegidian. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, there you go. Now, that's your, your uh, friend on guitar, right? That's my cousin on the... Okay. Yeah. And that's you on vocal? Yeah. <laughs> you got that Ian Gillen stamp there. <laughs> now, what year was this? 1995. Wow. This is at a studio in Cal State, LA. Very cool. And that's my friend Greg Hosharian on bass. He's actually a keyboardist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the metal mayor in action. So what happened? Twenty with years music? ago, you were uh, did you, uh, you were in a, a few different bands, right? Uh, during that time, uh, that was uh, that's kind of like a made up band actually. Right. But um, I, for a while in high school, we had a band called High Voltage. Uh, didn't go far. Oh wow, he's saying we got a caller calling. But go uh -huh. ahead, finish up. Um, and then after that, we made an attempt uh, a couple of years later, and just. Uh, I think we were committed to too many other things, mm. so we couldn't go and you know we couldn't get too serious about it. Um, but I think that uh, I've come to the realization that I'm better as a fan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sounded good up there. I'll tell Thanks. you. We, we got a caller that uh, is called in. Uh, we'll uh, go ahead and take the call now. Oh, or maybe we won't. All right. So they hung up. All right. Well, if you do want to call in, we'll open the phone lines. Uh, you can call in at eight five five eight seven eight. Four six five two, and talk to the metal mayor of Montebello. <laughs> you know what's funny? Obviously, uh, you, you came out and saw you, you came out to the screening, which I was very uh, thankful for. Back, back last uh, June, a couple yes. of Junes ago, uh, yeah, last June at the, the um, uh, Beverly Cinema, and um, you know it's so funny. We're working on the. Uh, by, by the way, the, the second movie just came out today. Not the second movie, part two of Pioneers 
of uh, L.A. Hard Rock and Metal just uh, was released today. But the second movie gets into the latter years, 82 to 86. And that was during the time we've got a lot of stuff, uh, you know, people talking about the PMRC, which was such a huge thing. And, uh, you know, just going back and watching some of the footage, I'm putting together a lot of the footage. We got uh, a lot of, uh, you know, inside people, uh, uh, Phyllis Polak, that was a, a journalist at the time that covered the PMRC. And, you know, it's funny now to look back on it then. But to think then, this was politicians. We had uh, Tipper Gore, Al yeah. Gore's wife, and all these politicians that just tried to desecrate metal. And it, like I said, you laugh at it now, but it was a serious thing. It went to the Supreme Court. And I'm just laughing at the stuff they're saying. I mean, it, they had acronyms for all the bands, you know, and they were serious. You know, KISS, of course, KISS and Satan Service. And you had, yeah. uh, you know, ACDC, uh, uh, you know, had an Antichrist, Devil's Children. Yeah. And even Dockett. They're talking about Dockett. Devil orders kids to kill even now. Was I mean, Crazy. such stupid shit. I mean, Don Dockett, a devil worshiper. But, it, but it's funny to see if, if you were into metal then, you were literally crucified. And this was just... You know, we're talking mid-80s at this time. You know, it's funny you bring that up because uh, I remember I was a kid, obviously, and I know Judas Priest uh, really dealt with that really bad. Absolutely. Over the that. one kid who killed himself listening to, I don't remember the name of the song. It was uh, a Better By You, Better Than Me. Yes, believe, that's yeah. the one. And I remember um, I was a little kid, and I had mentioned that I liked the band Iron Maiden and, the you know, Number of the Beast, 666. Right. And one of my mother, mother's friends tells my mom, you can't let your child listen to that. That's the devil's music. <laughs> and, you know, I, I got to tell you that, you know, I'm a ver very spiritual guy. I have a strong faith in Jesus Christ, but sure. I've never let heavy metal make me feel any different, you know. Um, but I love Iron Maiden. I love Judas Priest. I'm a big Van Halen fan, Black Sabbath. I mean, you can people can criticize these bands all they want. And uh, I'm not going to listen to what they have to say because I love the musicianship. I don't mm -hmm. what they stand for. And, uh, you know, for a lot of it is just, uh, it's just kind of like theater, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Looks like we're going to a break here. We're going to be back with a metal mayor of Montebello, Mr. Jack Hedginian. Coming up, T-Radio V, Inside Metal. Wake up, we've got big news. I'm not gonna mumble this time. Geekscape, the long-running movie video game. Let me do one more. Hey geeks, we got big news! Geekscape, your favorite show about movies, video games, comics, and TV, is coming to T-Radio V Monday, October 6th. And it'll be on every Monday from then on, 7 p.m. Until the apocalypse happens, we're all eaten by zombies. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, E.D. Don, from The Real Talk Show. I want y'all to check me out every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Real life, real music, real sex, real everything. It's a real world. Check us out every Tuesday, The Real Talk Show, right here on T-Radio V, radio and TV. What it do is your man Money B from Digital Underground asking everybody to check out the Going Way Back show, your home for classic hip hop, raw and uncut. Join me and me, DJ Always, as well as Ty Teasy bringing you the old school new news every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, right here on T Radio V. That's right, Radio in TV.
right. T Radio V Inside Metal Show. Yeah, Inside Metal Show. Brand new Armored Saint. Have you heard the uh, new Armored Saint? Uh, no, album? this is amazing, but I'm a big fan of John Bush and Armored Saint. Uh, John's the greatest. We had him on a. Uh, he's the big contest winner here for Betty's Garage. We do like a little metal trivia show, which we're going to do uh, a trivia contest. We're going to do for Jack a little bit later right. on the last segment. See yeah. how Jack does. But right now, we'll see. We'll see uh, if you could. Uh, we could uh, beat John Bush out of uh, the number one position here. Uh, but yeah, John, the new Armour Saint, fantastic. I just saw them. Uh, we we're just talking about the Armour Saint Saxon show at the House of Blues. Uh, amazing show. And I know they're, um, you know, all from the East LA. John's originally from El Sereno and all that whole uh, area of, um, uh, you know, I, I guess you'd say that, you know, East LA, Montebello, put it, you know, all, well, East Pasadena. It's, yeah. It's all, uh, yeah. San Gabriel Valley. San Gabriel Valley. There yeah. you go. It's such a huge metal community from the 80s yeah. uh, and still today. I mean, so many great artists and, uh, uh, has, has come out of that uh, that area. Ar- Armored Saint, I know, like um, the guitarist uh, that passed away, Dave Pritchard. I believe it, his mother was a, was a teacher at Sher High School, which is just up the street from my house. Oh wow, yeah, in the eighties, yeah. Pass. yeah, 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 yeah. But Armored yeah, Saint's yeah. a great band. I mean, very few people know that Metallica once opened up for Armored oh, Saint. Yeah, I was at those shows. You were. Uh, yeah. It's a little before my time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was fortunate living in uh, Orange County. We had a lot of great metal clubs. Uh, and I saw, you know, uh, you know, at the Woodstock, you know, all the early, you know, from Motley Crue, all those when they were all club acts. Uh, I, I was a little old, a uh, little too young for Van Halen, but uh, I saw the first, uh, very first uh, Metallica show uh, that they did uh, in Radio City. And then I saw them open up for Saxon. And this is when they were still a cover band. They were doing all new Web of British heavy metal covers. I think they only had like Hit the Lights, two original songs. But yeah, those those were great times. And uh, back then you didn't have a lot of the clubs in East LA. They either came to Orange County or Hollywood. And Hollywood, it was a lot harder to get into because that was kind of, even yeah. back then, kind of the glamier, kind of glitzier. You know, if you were to play the, the whiskey or even the Troubadour at the time, which was the big club, you had to really have a name for yourself. So a lot of the heavier bands, uh, even the Armored Saints and, uh, you know, of course, Metallica and, um, a Slayer, who were you know we're just talking about it from the Huntington Park, uh, uh, Southgate area, which is very yeah. close to to where you are. They would all play the Woodstock and Radio City and Anaheim and the Concert Factory and uh, Costa Mesa and uh, those and, and even a lot of the local bands at the time that were first starting out, uh, Leather Wolf and uh, you know Dante Fox, the old Great White and yeah. uh, August. He's Red from Montebello, by the way, Jack Russell. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, he, you know I think he yeah. did mention that actually. He's from Montebello. He's from Montebello. See, there yeah. you go. Some more Montebello history, but yeah. A lot of, lot of uh, great stuff in that area. Now, i got to tell you a funny story. I was managing a band, Eden, back in the uh, uh, mid-'80s, and they were on uh, Enigma Records, and we did a, a signing in a, a store called Wild Rags in Montebello, and that was my first time ever Whittier Boulevard. experiencing. Yeah, it was a great metal store. And I remember at the time, the band was so upset with me. Like, you know, it was, you know we had signed, and uh, Poison had signed after us, and they're doing, you know, Tower Records and yeah. this and that. And uh, Enigma had uh, completely lost interest because the A&R guy had left the label, so we got totally screwed by the label. So we had no support from the label. And in Montebello, our record was selling. It was like uh, us, like Judas Priest, I think, you know, Defenders of the Faith at yeah. the time. And I think Slayer had just put out Reign of Blood and uh, Master of Puppets were like the, and, and the Eden album were like the biggest selling records. And so I said, let's do this in store. You know, we had Candy C. Tom Mastery, who was great. She did a live thing. And the band, the Spinal Tap had just come out. And they were like laughing, thinking it's going to be a Spinal Tap moment. You remember the yeah. scene when they do the record store signing and no one shows up? Yeah. And, and uh, I got to tell you, we went there and uh, they expected nothing there. Over 400 people. In line, when we get there, we're like, where did these people come from? And it was such a huge metal community in that area. And it a was. lot of people neglect that area because you think, you know, Hollywood. And we were, you know, Orange County. So we never really got in uh, to there. And then right in the middle. That, it was right in the middle. And the fans were just so enduring. And just like, you know, because we had a couple songs that were on heavy rotation on Candy C. And uh, they just loved it. And it was it just really opened our eyes. And it was like, you know, but yeah, like I said, even before I, I did a lot of when I did my fanzine, the headbanger, we had, you know, Armored Saint used to come down yeah. a lot. Or we had, you know, Tyrant and Abattoir and a lot of these bands from Pasadena that would come down, do shows in Orange County and a lot of great metal. Out There's there. a lot of history there. Uh, you know, I believe Armored Saint got their They named themselves after a movie they went to go see at a theater in Monterey Park. Yes. It right. It was. Um, 
not uh, not way before uh, Ex- Excalibur, I think. Ex- it was. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. Gonzo named it. Yeah. And then another another uh, factoid about Montebello is uh, Twisted Sister filmed their music That's video at right. Montebello High School. That's right. Yeah. And it was, I believe, it was the. Uh, I want to rock. I want to rock, yeah. and that was, was at cool. the uh, Montebello High School pool. That's right. Exactly. That's right. That's 1985, right. I believe. And they wanted it because they said that was like you know all the metal kids were yeah. in that area. And that's that's so true. Very very cool. We got some photos, uh, and we'll we'll keep the phone lines open if uh, anyone wants to call in. Once again, eight five five eight seven eight four six five two. Let's show some uh, photos. I believe most of these were from the Nam show last year. A couple years, couple back. years back. Yeah, I've been going to go. Nam. That's Steel uh, Panther, right? That's uh, the singer Steel Panther and my friend Anush. Uh, that was at the uh, Golden Gods. Vinnie Paul. Vinnie Paul from Pantera. And look at one, the metal mayor with his Motorhead shirt. Uh, Way to represent. I'm like, that's one of my favorite metal drummers of all time, Vinnie yeah, Paul. Vinnie Paul. That's Fieldy from Corn. All right. Yeah. Rudy Sarzo. Rudy Sarzo. I thought it was Steven Tyler for a second. No, but <laughs> I, when I see Rudy Sarzo, I can't help but think of Randy Rhodes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Quiet right. There Steven you go. Piercy, Piercy, a rat. Jerry Cantrell. Bill Elson Chains. I didn't realize he was that tall. There Tom Mariah of Slayer. Mariah, the man. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck Billy. Chuck Billy of Testament. You Big are shout true out. Metalhead, I man. am. Look at this guy. Big shout out to Cancer Survivor right Absolutely. there. I really respect that man. Yeah. And that's uh, Jason Bonham, John Bonham's oh, son. Oh, okay. Wow. Didn't recognize him. There you go. That's Mike oh, Portnoy, Portnoy of Dream Theater, now with uh, Winery Dogs. Yeah. And that is Slipknot. Mick Thompson from uh, Slipknot. Yeah. And that Shavo. is Shavo from uh, System of a Down. Our fellow, fellow Armenian. Armenian. That's, That's at his it. actual wedding. I was invited to his wedding yeah. uh, a few years back. Yeah. And That's Darren. And Darren. Yeah. And again, Tom Mariah at the NAMM show. And Michael Anthony. One of your heroes. One of my heroes Amazing. from Van Halen. Yeah. You know, he. Oh. And uh, Kerry, Kerry King. King, the man with the bad attitude but fast fingers on the guitar. <laughs> Mike Inez, Inez of Allison Chains, yeah. Nazi, Rob Zombie, yeah. Zach, Zach Wild, by far right now, top guitarist yeah. next to Eddie Van Halen. Uh, I won't argue that. And those are just uh, pretty girls. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Well, yeah. there you go. So once again, we'll keep the lines open eight five five eight seven eight four six five two. You used to, didn't you, uh, grow up with or uh, go to school with one of the guys in System Up and Down? Or no, you? they actually went to school in Hollywood. Hollywood. I, yeah, 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 and um, but we have a lot of mutual friends. My sister actually grew up with the singer, okay. and um, you but, saw them at the clubs though, right beforehand. I did. Yeah, yeah, I remember so going that, to yeah. see them at clubs. It was just a bunch of a bunch of Armenians. That's all. I'm like, right, you know, we're supporting one of our own. And then after uh, about a year, I noticed that majority of the crowd were non-Armenians. Mm. And I told myself, they're making a name for themselves. Yeah, yeah. And then I saw Rick Rubin at one of the shows at the yeah. Roxy. At the Whiskey. Uh, it was one of the shows, oh, Whiskey or Roxy. Yeah. But I talked to him at the Rainbow prior to the show over dinner. And I walked up. And I'm like, hey, what do you think of System of a Down? And he looked at me and he said, they have a huge, huge future. And then they got signed months later, and they blew up. And Absolutely. I'm just very happy for them. Mm. Yeah, I used to see them. Uh, their first, you know, it's funny. I remember my buddy told me, Armenian guy, David Adjian. And they had just, uh, he, he worked for Music Connection. He said, you know, have you heard of this band, System of a Down? And I said, uh, he goes, all Armenian band. And I said, what? I, I saw posters, System of a Down. I didn't know what the hell that was, if it was mm-hmm. a movie or what. He goes, no, they're a band, all Armenian. And uh, this is the first time I, and I was pretty, you know, I knew all about the metal bands that were coming out. I said, never heard of them. I go to the bank later that day, one of the bank tellers, Armenian chick, like, goes, you like heavy metal? I go, yeah. I think I was wearing like a metal shirt or something. She goes, you got to see this band System of a Down. I'm like, go, my buddy was just talking about them. I swear to God, I'm driving home from the bank and I'm at the stoplight and I see, uh, Posting on you, you know those uh, big things that says post no bills on yes. the big wooden like thing? a construction site. Yeah, a construction site, and it says thousand dollar fine, post no bills. I see this girl in high heel shoes and a dress, and I'm going, what the hell is she doing? And she's got these posters and a staple gun, postering up system of a down. Hilarious. I, I, I'm going no way. All within an hour, I go, I got to go see this band. I saw them at the Viper Room and. Uh, it was again, like you said, all Armenians, and I'm just like floored. I go, these guys are amazing, you know. And uh, yeah. 
it, uh, it they struggled, man. They struggled for a while on they the scene, hard. and they were were always opening. They were the opening band, and after they played, boom, everyone left. All the fans left. Yeah. And they did that for quite some time, and I remember seeing Darren at a show at the Roxy. I think it was Static X. And he was like, man, we're never going to get signed. All these bands are getting signed. I, we're talking about like Snot. I just signed with, you know, Geffen and uh, Static X. We're doing their Warner Brothers thing and, uh, you know, Cold Chamber and this and that. He said, man, we're never going to get signed. I go, dude, hang in there. You're, you're, you're going to get signed, man. He said, more music is just too weird. No one likes it. You know? and, and it's uh, funny because, you know, they broke the record uh, for selling right. out a show. Well, Corn used to hold the record. He was saying, he's going, we're out drawing these bands yeah. and, you know, that's going to happen. And it certainly did. We're going to go into another short break here with uh, my good friend and mayor of Montebello, Jack Hedginian. Hi, I'm Holly, and this is Michael. We're on Love Life on T-Radio V every day. No! no! Every Tuesday. Tuesdays. Every day I try to get her to have a love life. But every Tuesday, where you can watch us and hear us, only one place. Only hear him, though. 5 p.m. Pacific time, T Radio V. We're gonna talk about love, relationships, sex. intimacy. There'll be some sex, but not between us. No, I don't have sex with him. Not often. You're single, we're gonna share with you what to do if you just want booty calls or be in a relationship. Oh, you know you like booty calls. I do. <laughs> What's it like to be in a relationship? We always say you have to be a strong me before you can be a great we. One place right here, Tuesdays, 5 p.m. Pacific, only on T Radio V, right? Yep. Cool. Brad is actually here right now. <laughs> I don't have the white disease. What's Whoa! <laughs> Give me yeah. I want to see like some a tiny intro. intro. Give me some boom. Yeah, Give me some boom, bro. This is going to make us money. Ask Robert who his favorite celebrity animals are. Okay. <laughs> the animal lovers. Sorry. All right, everybody, whip your out. out. Everybody whip it out. We'll be right back. See, now it's just... Let's do a couple things. Ready? Action. Or who oh, made monsters. Her monsters. You. <laughs> oh, that means me. Take it. It's out of your the unreal mind. <laughs> to be honest with you, I like being down there a little more because my head was. <laughs> <laughs> Candy corn monsters, boom! Hi, I'm Kristen Renton, and I don't know what I'm saying. We're, this world, one's World Animal Day. Right? Here we go. Oh, I'll just. Oh, I'm <laughs> real. It's not a real wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you fake it. I had a contest on night calls, and they were all peeing everywhere. Everyone's like, can I get another Diet Coke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we want to do more. I was going to say, you're going to kick ass on this contest. Within the first two notes, he's like, yeah, Metallica. <laughs> I think you might take the crown from John Bush, dude. What, what, what wow. would that be? The mayor taking the crown <laughs> away from John Bush. Yeah. That would be pretty awesome. Dude. That would be. The Armenian metal mayor, <laughs> nonetheless. That's yes. awesome, man. We're going to get into on. the uh, the uh, Betty's Garage contest, and that was named actually after John Bush's mother because we used to hang out at his house in El Sereno in his wow. garage listening to metal tunes at the time. And I was like 16, 17 uh, at the time, and Armor Saint was just starting out, and that was uh, just you know the metal mecca. We would hang out and just listen to you know, old Judas Priest and Saxon and Iron Maiden albums and stuff. and uh, Denim and leather. 80s. Oh, yes. Denim Absolutely, and leather. Absolutely, man. <laughs> oh, you should have came to the show. It was such a killer show, the Saxon Armored Chain show the other day. I unfortunately found out about the show that evening. Mm. Yeah. And, I, like, I've got all these political events to go to. Sure. And they've, like, taken precedent over mm. everything else. But uh, okay. I will soon return to frequenting well, heavy I'll metal keep shows. I'll posted on. We'll, we'll definitely hit some shows yeah. in, uh, coming this summer. Absolutely. So what else you got going on? Uh, I know you got a lot of big – is there anything uh, we could promote and support uh, – uh, well, a couple things. I have a re-election to the city council in November, um, but something I've been very, very focused on this year is obviously the centennial of the Armenian Genocide. Yes. 
And um, that's taken a lot of time to, um, you know, advocate for justice, um, recognize the genocide. Obviously, you know, the United States, our president doesn't formally uh, take a position on it, a favorable one, that is. Yep. Of course, Obama has uh, totally uh, avoided uh, the word genocide, which is a political term. Um, but we will continue to uh, uh, fight for justice. Obviously, we know that the Turkish government denies what happened. Um, I'm a grandchild of a genocide survivor. Me and that well. you are too. And you know what? That's the common denominator among all Armenians is, mm -hmm. is that those, those hor horrible years. And that's why we have Armenians all over. Mm. Your family came here to America years ago. So did mine. Some have gone to France and other places. Mm. Uh, but so this is the centennial of the 100th year. And I just, as a mayor, I'm just trying to do my part and serve my capacity to advocate for the genocide. And your grandfather actually came to Montebello. He did in 1957, actually, wow. 1956, my, my, see, my dad was from Fresno, and this was, you know, because L.A., there weren't a lot of Armenians at the time. Even Glendale, there weren't Glen until, like, yeah. the mid to late 80s, I think, it really. But, yeah. like, Fresno was kind of the Armenian capital. On, on the Fresno world. is the oldest community yeah. in uh, California, and then I would say Montebello would be right after that. Wow. So I'm three generations in Montebello. My family moved there in 56, 57, mm. East L.A., then Montebello. Uh, but my girlfriend is from the Central Valley, uh, Lori Tatulian, oh. who's got a show called The Big Bad Armo Show that uh, you're she's gonna have to comedian, come out and see. Right? Yeah, I she's a comedic actress. Yeah. Does uh, sketch comedy, really funny. Makes fun of the culture, um, but uh, she also makes fun of me now. Yeah, because uh, she knows I'm a big <laughs> metalhead, the politician. She's not metal into head. metal. Dude. No, it's okay. She likes all that uh, Tori Amos crap, uh, you know. All right. Yeah, all right, one of those. Yeah. Okay. I, I like You'll it loud, fast, it. and a lot of guitar. There you go. But the important thing is, and I think people uh, need to recognize, it's, uh, you know, because there's a, a lot of people, and I don't want to get all political here uh, about the Armenians, but, but the point is, is just there to, to, to be recognized. And just the, the denial is what uh, the Armenian community is upset about. I Absolutely. mean, a lot of people are thinking, you know, we're just crying that we, oh, we want, you know, uh, justice, we want this. Uh, no, we just want them to admit. And they've been denying it for you, and particularly President Obama. I mean, really, the only president that acknowledged it was, was Reagan. Uh, back in the 80s with Governor Duke Majin. 1981. Time. Yeah, and, and this was during the Cold War and everything else that was going on in Russia. But since then, uh, and, you know, we're talking here, you know, even 30 years later, they're still, you know, uh, yeah. denied. And, and that's what is, because I, I need to point out, because a lot of people think, oh, the Armenians are just complaining. It's like, no, it's like, you know, none of the history books, there's been nothing said about the Armenian genocide. It's like, you know, me going to a Jewish person saying, hey, the Holocaust never happened. It wasn't, you know, so Absolutely. that that's all that it really is, is about. And they still continue to stay to deny I mean, can you imagine if we denied Knowledge. slavery in America yeah. that it ever existed? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not fair. It's not Absolutely. fair to black people. Absolutely. You know? And uh, so for us, it's it's an insult. It's an insult when a country says, that's not what happened. Mm. But my grandfather watched his father and his uncle get executed. You know? Same plus thing a number of people they witnessed. My grandfather yeah. as well. He had to hide in front, uh, up on a tree and watch his family get murdered. You know? Yeah. So I how does that feel that. That, that, you know, you know that story? Mm. So what is your grandfather and my grandfather? Are they liars? Yeah, exactly. Right? Is, is all these people liars? That yeah. Come out, you know? And you know what? The country is going to face its past sooner than later. But And we know it. we'll be patient. We'll wait for that day to come. Absolutely. And I'm glad you're doing something about it. I know you were very active in uh, you know the 100-year uh, yeah. genocide march and, and everything else. I saw the, the photos and everything S that you were. Speaking of the march, we had 166,000 people that took to the streets. And Tom Morello joined us from uh, Audio Slave and Rage Against the Machine. Oh, right on. He was out yeah. there. Chris Cornell tweeted. Wow. about the recognition of the genocide. So you know what? Uh, some of our friends in the rock world are, are with us. I know Tom had a uh, show with Serge Tankian, had a podcast, the uh, Axis of Metal. Is that still going on? They I think it's Axis of, of Justice. Axis of Justice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're yeah. both very uh, involved in the sense of, uh, you know, human rights and, mm. and uh, bringing, uh, you know, civil uh, justice. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's get back to metal, huh? Yep. So we got the contest coming up. Do we have any more? Did, did you say we had a caller? Or, 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 or we're all good now. So um, let's talk about some of your early metal shows growing up as a kid. My first uh, metal show was uh, Ozzy Osbourne at Irvine Meadows for the Randy Rhodes tribute. Oh, and that okay. was uh, March of 92. Now, was that with Zach? On that was with Zach, Zach? Wilde, Randy, Randy Castillo, Castillo on drums, Mike Inez on bass. Mm. Motorhead, 
and Ugly Kid Joe. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I was at that show because I went to all those old Irvine Meadows shows. Well, let me refresh your memory. You'd know if you were at that show or you'd remember. That's when the crowd rushed the stage. Okay. And they had a, like just a row of ambulances. They're like taking oh, wow. people away. Okay. And I Ozzy actually, yeah, yeah uh, in, in his liner notes for I believe it was Li- Live and Loud album, mm. he um, he talks about that show. So I don't know what happened, but I remember when they started playing Paranoid during the um, encore, a guy runs up on stage, and here comes security, and Ozzy tells the security to leave this guy alone, and Ozzy puts his arm around the guy, and they start singing the first or second verse of Paranoid, and then Ozzy's like, you know what, folks, make this the most memorable night of your lives, come up on the stage, and I remember, you know, we were like in the eighth grade, I was with my cousin Greg, my friend Sacco, and my other friend Salpi, and uh, we, we ran halfway and i stopped everybody I said guys this is not a good idea and we look back and there's just thousands of people headed for the stage and we had no choice but we had to go along with them and it got really bad people were like ripping off amplifiers and oh, wow. drums and all kinds of stuff but yeah yeah that was my first show and then about two weeks later my sister took me to my first van halen show at the forum and that was for the foreign lawful carnal knowledge tour at sammy agar, sammy agar. and that was at the uh, that was at the forum they actually postponed that show to may i believe because of the riots. Oh, really? The 92 okay. riots. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, they postponed yeah, yeah. the show. Wow. So, yeah, that was a big year for me, 92. Absolutely. Yeah. Urban Meadows, man, I saw so many great, great shows there. Uh, the band I managed, Eden, we did a show opening up for Dawkin and Great White, I think, in 86. And it was such a great party afterwards. That was a, a great uh, venue. And they're, they're calling Still, it Irvine Meadows again. They're yeah. The, they're doing some big cat house show, I think I saw. I'll have to check in, that out. In uh, August, yeah, all the old 80s bands that played at the Cat House. Uh, so, yeah, it's good that they got that venue because so many venues are closed up. House of Blues is closing up. No it's way. closing up. They've been having problems there with the neighbors. There's homes in the back. Oh, yeah. And it's what I've been hearing from my uh, politician friends that uh, mm-hmm. they've been having problems, but they're going to close that down. I heard they're making a big hotel, and that's what it was all about is just, uh, you know, another hotel. Going on. Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're going to get back. Our, our next uh, segment's Betty's Garage, right? Our final segment. We're going to see how Mr. Jack Hedgidian... <laughs> The true, we're going to prove that he is truly the metal mayor <laughs> of Montebello. Coming up next, Inside Metal Show on T Radio V. Engaging interviews with intriguing public figures, informed analysis of the week's most important news. The world's best bands. Movies! Langdon Nation, saving the world one dirty joke at a time. Saturdays from 1 to 3, exclusively on T Radio V. Oh my god, I'm only gay for pay. Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Wow! So but we'll do it. We'll do it better when we when the show actually starts. Yeah, no.
All right, Inside Metal Show on T Radio V with my very good friend, the Metal Mayor of Montebello, Mr. Jack Hedginian. <laughs> We're back in action. We're going to uh, get into Betty's Garage in a minute. Are you prepared? Are you nervous? I'm ready. You're ready? I love, I love, I love to talk metal. And, I yeah. love it. Dude, I love it. That's awesome. And uh, uh, talking about metal, you were jamming at a, a cool metal club, from what I hear, uh, called Love Hate Bar. That's that the it? Love Hate Bar. That's actually uh, East LA, just yeah. on the fringe of Montebello. Uh, my friend Mike Davis owns that place. He plays bass. Uh, played with Lizzie Borden yeah, was, and in I Halford's uh, solo band. I want to give a shout out to the to the uh, Love Hate Bar. You got the um, Wyatt Earp Immortals who play a bunch of guys on Sundays. Right. Got to check that place out on a Sunday evening. Absolutely. And what's the address there? Uh, it's on Pomona Pomona Boulevard, right at right Atlantic and Pomona. Okay, cool. you can't miss it. Awesome. You can take the Gold Line there, and so you can drink. There you go. <laughs> I might have to do that. I'm right by the subway station now. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to join you on that. That sounds cool. So, who who are some of your favorite uh, musicians now and then? Uh, top guitarist Eddie Van Halen. I figured that. Zach Wild, uh, Tony Iommi. Yes. Um, I am a fan of uh, Mick Mars. Yeah. Ooh. Quite a bit, yeah. He's got a hell of a guitar tone. Mm -hmm. like yeah, uh, I would say uh, Jimi Hendrix definitely one of the top guitarists. Uh, but really, right now, it's 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 all about Zach Wilde and Eddie Van Halen for me on the guitar. Very cool. Yeah. And again, coming, uh, you know, from from your age, growing up in that that grunge alternative kind of era, that's that's a rarity that you uh, know so much about the cool classic and '80s metal guys and all the uh, great stuff. Yeah. You know, no, it's. You it's like I said, I fought it. I yeah. fought that whole alternative thing because I'm like, where are the guitar solos? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny because that range, now you're seeing the kids nowadays since the internet came through and they're getting into a lot revival. of the, the revival. It's coming up. But, you know, there was a while during the, the late 90s into the 2000s. And, you know, again, one of the bands, really System of a Down, that kind of brought the whole, what they call the new metal yeah. of the new millennium back. And then a lot of those bands, you know, Static X and Drowning Pool and Disturbed yeah. and all that. And then the Ozfest came in but just before that it was like you know nothing but uh with that said um no more callers we are going to go right into the betty's garage contest and we're gonna really see if this guy is a metalhead or a poser uh oh i think i i i, I can tell right now this guy's a true metalhead <laughs> the mayor we got the mayor on this show the mayor of montebello <laughs> you ready for song number one there jake let's do it Iron Maiden, <laughs> War Eagles there. Ah, oh, look at that. Next one. I think you're gonna take the crown, my friend. Look at this, this guy really is a mayor. Turn it up a little bit, Jake. Isn't that bass? One person plays bass like that. Uh, I cut you got me vocals. on that one. The vocals would have given yeah. it away. Play it one more time. One more time. I make it a little difficult here. You Not are. Not all that easy. Oh, no. Same era as Iron Maiden. Even a little bit more. Got me on this one, Vocals man. Vocals are about to kick in. But Lemmy, Motorhead. Oh, it's Motorhead. Oh, my God. Death Forever. Oh, my God. It was one I'm of a their, big fan. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of an underground song. That was a difficult one. Ready for song three? Judas Priest. Yes. You remember the song? Can't think of the title. It's off the British Steel album. Starts out with that bass solo. Mm -hmm. I love this album. The Rage. The Rage. Yes. Song number four. That's good though. This will show if you are true underground battle. Looking for some action, running against the time. 
This isn't Tigers of Panting, is it? <laughs> no, very, right from that era, though. American band. Amer- um, wow, this guy is true metal. Uh, boy, boy, that was that sounded like Tigers of Panting. Um, you got to help me out on this one, man. I got I'm too. New political. York band. Uh, this was their third album. Let's playing it again. Uh, Narita was the album before. Guy Speranza vocals on here. Very underground New York band. That gate came out right around the same time Van Halen came out. The New York Van Halen and Van Halen just took over, and these guys, they were on Electra. Riot. Oh, Riot. Riot. Fire Down Under, the oh, title man. track. <laughs> this is that era, yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. Where are we? Song five. Oh, you're really, you're really pushing the envelope, man. You mentioned this two seconds ago. This is Tigers of Panting. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hellbound. From the Spellbound this is a really album. good band, man. Yeah. I, I, I remember you mentioned that more, one time ago. You know the band Tigers of Panting? I'm like, yeah. They're in the gut. They're really cool. This, is, this band, band influenced Metallica. Oh, yeah. yeah. Big time. They were a big part of the whole new wave of British heavy metal scene. Never made it in the stage. No. Unfortunately. Uh, we ready for the next song? Let's do it. Wrong. Yes. <laughs> Snap your fingers. I love this band. Yes. Yeah, this is kind of like guy. the early industrial Abs- this, metal. This was a huge. Yeah, it was. On the this whole, was high school for me. Uh, yeah, hardcore of New York. Yeah. Snort whiskey. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Pat Travers. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, oh man, let's do it. Very cool. Actually, Nico McBrain was in that band yeah, before he joined right. Metal- yeah. uh, Iron Maiden. Yeah, that's right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? This is Van Halen from the Women and Children first album. Yes, song. Fools. Absolutely. I ain't no fool, baby. When it comes to heavy metal. Look at that. I, uh, that was a giveaway there. <laughs> Mind your picture with this guy. It's Dave Mustaine. Oh. It's no. Oh no, this Better. is Testament. Yes, there you go. Sorry about that. Electric and Alex crowd. Skolnick is an awesome guitarist. Absolutely. Alex rules. All right, this is truly old school. If you get this, you'll be, I'll be very impressed. 77? I'm gonna name a band that, this song came out the year I was born. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Truly underground. Yeah. You remember the band Angel? Angel Witch? No, Angel. Angel, wow, Angel. You knew Angel Witch? Angel. Yeah, Angel. Angel. They were from the Kiss era. Uh, yeah. They were on Casablanca, came out here in LA. Frank Domino featured in the movie. Uh, one of the first glam, LA glam bands, so to speak. Angel. They came, came out from Washington, D.C. in 75. Is that all? Is that all 10? Wow, dude, you, did, you didn't quite get John Bush's record, but you did. I mean, you did. I, I threw some hard ones. Angel was a tough one. Angel's I, a tough one, yeah. But I gave you the giveaway with Van Halen. You got, the, <laughs> you got Pat Travers, which is pretty awesome. Love that song. And even the fact that you knew Nico played on that, that uh, the Putting It Straight album, the first couple albums. Yeah, Nico yeah. was with Pat Travers, and also he was the drum tech for Clive Burr. And then, oh, when, I didn't and then know when, I think when Clive died, he became the drummer for Iron Maiden. Yeah, wow. Cool. Yeah. The one thing, I mean, being such a metalhead, I mean, this is something I, we were talking about earlier with the, the whole PMRC thing. I mean, I know that was so many years ago, but do you get opposition from any people when you were first running in, in uh, politics? No. And being metal? and No. Being... No. I, I would say that people are shocked that I'm into heavy metal because they say I don't have the heavy metal look. Right. Maybe it's because I have. And you're proud about it, which is great. You're very outspoken about it. Yeah. Even at the inaugural speech, you were talking about Van Halen and stuff. <laughs> like, yes. This guy is is very proud. That's and I put the horns up. You did. I remember that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
So um, well, I guess we're, we're about to end here. We've got a, a, a couple minutes. You got something we could, uh, you got to promote or how people could get? I know you got a Facebook page out there. I have there. a Facebook page. Yeah, it's just my name, Jack Hagenian. Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram as Jack the Mayor. Um, but I'd be happy to talk to people. I'm actually going to work uh, before the end of my term as mayor to do a charity heavy metal show in Montebello for uh, maybe uh, pediatric uh, cancer. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I'll be there. And I'm going to talk to you about doing our next screening for a second movie in Montebello. 100%. We've got to do it in Montebello. I would love to do that. The mayor. The, we we got to get this guy governor, man. we got to make this guy governor of California. Everybody watching the show, support this man. Not only is he a true metalhead, but he's, he's done some tremendous stuff for the community of Montebello. And he's a great guy. Jack thank Heginian, thank you so much for uh, being a guest here on Pleasure's the Inside Metal Show. Thank you. We'll see you next week.